Good morning everybody, JT Bear here on kind of a rainy, drizzly morning. We had a horrible wind and hail and rainstorm last night. Did a number on my indigo to rose tomato tree, I tell you what. But it makes for a good day to go in the greenhouse. So I figure I'll show you the tomato tree and then we'll get into the greenhouse. For the most part you can see this looks pretty good. But those two side ones that I planted, unfortunately the wind was just too much. Knocked them both over. So what I'm going to do today, I think, if I get a chance, is I might grab some sort of trellis material so I can tie them up beside, or maybe put a string up to the top and they can grow up on sort of a triangle. We'll see. Tomatoes. Anyway, I'm going into the greenhouse where it's dry. I do love rainy days in many ways. Everything gets nicely watered. I don't have to put any effort into it. That mint is doing great, eh? See, mint will completely take over, but we don't mind. We kind of want it to. Anyway, everything gets nicely watered for free, and it's cool enough I can work in the greenhouse. And that means I can get around to a few different projects I've been putting off because it's been too dang hot. A few things I might try and get done today. I'm thinking about maybe doing some cloning, thinking about maybe planting some more of those pepper seeds because I'm hooked. I've got to take those peas out and uh, I'm toying with maybe getting a couple of more shabunkin because those little tiny fish are so hard to see in this tank. And you know, they are social creatures. There's only two of them in there and the plecos, so I imagine they'd like the company of more. First things though, projects. This little red chili is the only standard red chili pepper plant that I have. And that's a problem for me because I don't even have any more seeds for it. Because again, this is one of the ones we saved from the grocery store a few years ago. I planted a few out, some were successful, some weren't. But turned out this year I had a single seed left in the envelope. Now, can you clone peppers? Rev was uh, saying kind of offhandedly in one of his videos a while back about how he wished he could. And I'm pretty sure you can, it just takes a lot longer. So the first of today's projects is I'm going to explore a couple of different ways to try and root cuttings from those pepper plants. Well, from that pepper plant because I would like to have many, many, many red chili peppers. It is the bulk and the base and the majority, pick whatever happy word you want, of my pepper powder that uh, keeps me going through the winter and uh, keeps me pretty much sniffles free. So let's get to cloning. So let's discuss where I'm going to cut this and why. Because I want to get multiple plants out of this, and I'm trying a few different ways to root it, I want to take it basically as far down as I can and, uh, you know, not kill it. Here, you'll notice I have branches coming out on two sides. So I'm going to take it just above that point. As carefully as I can. And now, what we're going to have left here is I should have solid branch coming out here, solid branch coming out here, and it looks like there's even one right here. So while this pepper is being thrown back a few weeks, maybe even months, it doesn't really matter because I'm looking for shrine peppers here, and uh, as long as I've got one to take in the house at the end of the season, I am a happy camper. So here is what we cut off of that plant. And I am, believe it or not, going to try and make three cuttings out of this. I'm going to take this here. I'm going to take this right here. And there we go. Now, just like any other plant we're trying to propagate by cutting, we're going to want to remove these lower leaves. so that it has just a little bit of plant left to support. I'm going to take away a lot of these larger leaves as well. And that really looks like we've hacked a whole lot off of that because we have. But basically, this will become a new red chili plant. Again, with this next one here, I'm going to take off a lot of these larger leaves and clean it up so it's just a few small leaves for it to support while it's first establishing its roots here. And with this one here, this is gonna hurt because there's a lot of beautiful growth on that. But 
This is about making a new plant. So I'll get back to you after that's done. And there we have our three little cuttings ready for the next step. Just let those little guys soak in a cap full of aquaponics water while I get going on the rest of this. This first method falls under mad science, so I think the happy face cup is pretty appropriate. I'm gonna take these cotton balls, fill this up with some aquaponic water, tuck the cutting in there, and we'll use this as a little greenhouse cap. All right, well those certainly soaked that up pretty quick. I guess I'll dump the excess uh, into one of the pepper plants. I don't wanna put cotton batten into my system. All right, so I've drained some of that off. I'm just gonna use a handy grape twig here. Make a hole in the middle of that. Pick a cutting, any cutting. Tuck it in. Push that to the bottom. So there we go, neatly tucked in. Shove the cotton back against the sides there. Now I know people uh, who grow certain specialty plants that swear this is the way to do it. So I'm just gonna drop my little lid on there and that's gonna create a greenhouse seal. So as that heats up, it'll collect on the top, drip back down as rain, stay warm and moist, and in theory, this should root. I'm not banking on it, but in theory, that should root. So that is system or method number one, testing it for the first time. Try it at your own discretion. We'll check back on that in a couple of weeks. All right, numbers two and three. Our next happy victim, or volunteer as this turns out, is going to go get rooted with this little tiny Cuban oregano cutting in the dirty aquaponics. As simple as a poke and a stuff. Now that setup is going to keep that cutting nice and moist, but not, you know, like soaking wet, but nice and moist. Not seeing any signs of wilt from that Cuban oregano. Beautiful plant. I've already got a plant from that inside, sitting in my desk, had to put something there. But we're doing pepper clones at the moment. Stay focused, Mr. Bear. One to go. As with all things in my aquaponic garden, this last one needs to go into the flood and drain bed so that it can have the best chance I can give it of rooting properly. That is gonna take a few minutes, which is why this has been waiting for a cool day, because that clone is going to be sitting in that little bit of water for a while. First I got to get rid of these peas. Had one of them this morning and it was uh, kind of bitter. Not the fresh spring pea that it's supposed to be so it's out of here. It's looking a little deficient on the nutrients anyway. That's fine if I get that out of here. Puts a little more uh, nutrients into the water for this guy doesn't it? Absolutely loving this indigo rose tomato plant. It's just doing so well. Alright, let's get those peas out of there and take a look at what kind of space we've got. Elderberries! It's the most amazing thing about plants and seeds and growing your own food. This whole massive pea plant came from a single pea. Not even a whole pod, just a single pea. And we've been eating off of it for weeks. Gardening has got to be the best investment in the world. All right, let's dig this out and check out those roots. Hmm, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get in there with my hand and the camera, so I'll pull this out and then we'll look at it. Well, that's all the root mass that came out of there. That can't be a good sign. That means there's a whole lot of roots in there that are uh, not attached to a plant anymore. It's going to be time to clean that out. Lots to do coming up soon. Anyway, let's get this sucker pulled out. Not bad. Not bad at all. But that should leave a lot more nutrients available for the tomato, I would think. And the broccoli. Oh yeah, I gotta show you guys the broccoli. Cool, found this monster hanging on the back of it. I think maybe uh, I'll leave that over there on the table to dry out in the heat on warmer days. And uh, one, two, three, four, five. Possibly get five more seeds. That'll be cool. I've never um, 
saved pea seeds. I always just buy them because they're so damn cheap. Sort of a different look, isn't it? It's barren, it looks like winter now. Yeah, not really. But let's check out the broccoli. In here, sort of, if we're careful. How's that look? Is it supposed to have those leaves coming up in the middle? I mean, it sure looks nice and healthy and it's a good solid bunching. But I'm thinking I should probably harvest that soon before it bolts. Anybody who's grown some broccoli, you can let me know maybe, perhaps. Comments below, you know, as always. The other broccoli looks like it's just starting to form its head there. So, I don't know. I might just pull this one out. Again, I'm trying to make some more nutrients for the tomato. And uh, they're kind of doing this weird browning of the leaves thing. Doesn't look very pretty, does it? Try to get those out. Now that we've got some light in there, we can see that uh, the heart of the sage is do not doing anywhere near as well as uh, maybe its extremities are. Not getting much sun in there, and it doesn't look like that strawberry is too happy right now either. I mean, there's the one in the main system. There are the ones in the frankenponics. Main system. So, this strawberry needs some lovin'. Definitely needs some light. I guess the next thing to attack then is the sage. Start cutting some of this back. Maybe get rid of this here. There's a little more light down there. I was initially thinking that I was going to harvest this by just taking the larger leaves off of it and uh, leaving these small ones to grow. But I think in light of the chaos that this has become, I'm just going to harvest it the same way I've done in years past. Take it back to a point where I see a couple of decent branches growing. Hopefully this is on screen. And snip. I should have brought my hedge trimmers for this. That's some nice, that's some nice thick sage stem there. This is going to be a fantastic looking harvest. Well, it looks a little scrappy and scraggly now, but I'm sure that will buff up. And I think we got to the strawberry in time. Might just make it now that it's got some light. That's fantastic. Plus, we've cleared up a little bit of room in the corner so I can put in that pepper. All right, well, best of luck to you, little guy. Nice and moist, but not soaking wet. Some good sun, but not direct sun. And big plants to look up to. You can do it. Nice little pile of sage from that harvest, eh? All right, time to string that up. All right, fabulous. Take that inside to dry for a couple of days. Split it up a bit, let it dry some more. Now, let's go get some pepper seeds while it's still a reasonable temperature to work in the greenhouse. So my plan of attack for these seeds, so I've got these little uh, jiffy pots. I don't know. Peat pots, they feel like paper to me, like a weird kind of cardboard, if you will. But, whatever, it's supposed to be biodegradable. So I'm gonna fill these up with some compost and then we can get started on planting those uh, pepper seeds and such. Okay, so let's just take a look at some of the things I'm gonna try and get going today. This Nepalese bell didn't make it the first time, so here's to hope. Scotch bonnets, again, didn't make it the third time either, so here's to hope. I've got some uh, saved seeds from the grocery store, Hungarian yellow wax peppers. Nice kind of an afterburn on those. And then here are two envelopes sent from Paul and Tracy that have some very interesting pepper varieties in there. Can't recall the names at the moment, but I can't open the envelopes with one hand either. Here are the four varieties that Paul sent me. Thank you again so much for these. The Sand Dollar and the Alipu we already have going. Today will be the, I don't know, you tell me, Uya Baba and Carolina Reaper. There's only a couple of those seeds left, so we'll probably be planting the last of those. Here's to hope with that. But yeah, thanks again, Paul, that's awesome. And then for my good buddy Tracy down there in Texas, who I hope isn't swimming in too deep of water right now, I got these datil, and these seeds here are from a friend of his whose mother brought them back from China and they don't have an English name. So if I can recall this correctly, 
he simply calls them those dang good peppers. So I'm really hoping that uh, some of those will sprout, but there's enough that I can try a few times. So thank you again, Tracy, for that. You guys are so awesome for enabling my uh, pepper collection addiction. That's great. Oh good, the tape sort of sticks. I might need to reattach it after the pot gets wet, but all right, let's get started with those darn good peppers. In an effort to exercise at least a little bit of self-control, I'm gonna try and only plant three of each of these varieties because I do have quite a few to go through. And as y'all know, I've already got quite a few growing. Not enough, but quite a few. All right, so next we've got the Dateel, Datil, Datil. I don't know, I'm so bad with all languages. I'm not even good with English, let's call it duck a duck. All right, anyway, these ones are next. So next we've got these Ouya Baba peppers. Good luck, little guys. Well, that's going to leave me with two of those pepper seeds, so grow, little guys, grow! Alright, last three Carolina Reaper seeds in the dirt. Alright, here's to hope for those, too. So with these Hungarian yellow wax hot peppers, I had some sprout the first year, but since then it's been kind of a no-go, so I'm very, very curious to see if these ones will go or not. Now as for these scotch bonnets, the problem I'm having with these is not that they're not sprouting, it's that the aphids are wiping them right out. I did put four seeds in that one, but that's only because I've had such terrible luck with them so far. So otherwise, just threes. I've been really good. So the last of the varieties that I brought out with me is the Napoli's Bell. I've got three of them in there now, ready to go, but I noticed that I've got two, four, five empty pots there. So. I'm going to get more seeds. I'll be right back. All right, so I think I'm going to put these uh, mini bell mixed variety peppers into the last five, because you never know what you're going to get when you're planting these mixed peppers. And it would be nice to, uh, you know, have one of each for the collection. Be very cool, very cute. So get started on labeling and such, I guess. Fabulous. Well, that's three in each of those, and that still leaves me some to put back in my little seed treasure chest. All right. Time to get the sprayer. So I'm just going to give everything a quick spraying before I throw some more soil on top of there. Oh, excited. I'm excited for lots of reasons, but, you know, more pepper varieties. Come on. I love the peppers. All right, a little bit more soil and those guys are done. Well, and that wraps it up for uh, planting peppers out this year. I have now at least planted one or three of each of the seeds that I have available. We'll see what the shrine looks like once everything has sprouted. You may have noticed this sitting on my table. This, do, 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 present as 100% diatomaceous earth. So. This is my plan for dealing with those aphids. I figure at first sight I can start sprinkling this all over the place and they'll be dead. So, excellent. Might even do a pre-sprinkle on some of these guys if I see any aphids wandering. Oh, I see some aphids wandering on this one. Let's give it a sprinkle, shall we? Well, with any luck, this is the last we will see of you aphids or spider mites or whatever you are. Wah, ha, ha. It's not a very good dusting, is it? Maybe I'll try this with two hands. Well, I guess that's dusted like a snowstorm at this point. All right, seem to have gotten a few of the plants beside it too. Interesting side note, this one uh, pepper cutting that's in the cotton balls with the little greenhouse top is already getting some condensation going on inside there. Let's hope that's a good sign. All right, everybody. Well, this has undoubtedly gotten to the point of a million and one clips again, so I have no idea how long this is going to have been. And I have diatomaceous earth dust all over my hands and camera, so I am going to wash up, go inside, all that jazz. Thank you all for joining me. I hope you have yourselves a fantastic day. Just a final thought here, postscript as it were. Does anybody know what kind of aquatic plant this is? I don't think it's proper duckweed, but it might be. I don't know. I got uh, a little tiny bit of it free with the Pleco, and it has multiplied considerably since then. So, yeah, if somebody knows and could let me know, that'd be great. Thanks, guys. See you later.